name is Ben and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear, you'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes, you'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture, you'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyse historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you, and you might want to consider subscribing. Right, hey guys, in today's video, we're talking chainmail. Okay, so the first thing we need to actually really understand when we, before we start to look at purchasing chainmail, is what are we buying it for? Are we simply a collector? Are we a reenactor? Or if we're not a reenactor, then we're really essentially a LARPer, that is live action role play. The key difference here is those people who are interested in LARP are not so interested in historical accuracy, and that's the key defining point here. Alrighty, so let's take a look at chainmail. Chainmail as a system actually dates back as far as 5000 BC and we believe was invented in somewhere around Persia, although we don't know exactly where, we don't know exactly when, and we don't know exactly who by. Budget is a key option here. Chainmail, a chainmail shirt can simply cost as little as a couple of hundred bucks made in India or Pakistan or somewhere like that versus maybe as much as $15,000 made by a historical armourer somewhere in Europe and made it very historically accurate methods and I can't afford anything like that so I'm somewhere uh, I, I think I paid $450 for this uh, chainmail um, hauberk there are three different types of mechanisms for constructing chainmail that is riveted, butted and welded Welded uh, chainmail is, is not very historically accurate and I don't recommend it. Butted chainmail is simply held together by the tension. Let's have a quick little look. And the problem with that is, is really any force, even from foam weapons that might be used in LARPing, may break apart the chainmail links and that's very unfortunate and it's going to detract from our chainmail. The third option is riveted and riveted is historically accurate and most if not all of the finds that we have of chainmail indicate that chainmail was most likely riveted. Alrighty so we have the construction techniques now we have to look at uh, the number of rings so typically we have a four in one ring system for chainmail let's take a quick look at that. That is the most realistic pattern, although there are several other variations on the theme. Both round and flat rings are historically accurate. The next thing we want to look at is the thickness of the rings. So typically 18 to 16 gauge uh, is, is accurate. And the most important factor around this is the inner dimension, the inner circumference of the chainmail itself. And that can vary from six to eight millimeters is being historically accurate. I've seen much worse than that. So obviously the inner, di inner diameter of the circle of the rings is going to affect the weight of the chainmail shirt, but it's also going to affect the amount of protection you have. Therefore, the smaller the internal di diameter, the more protection you have. Lastly, we need to look at what the chainmail itself is made from. So there are essentially three different options here. There is um, steel, aluminium, and galvanized steel. Galvanized steel has a very bright finish to it and it doesn't look realistic at all. Uh, although if you're a collector or a LARPer, it's fantastic because it really requires very little to no maintenance. The next option um, was aluminium. Again, not a very realistic finish and aluminium yeah, in today's context was not in existence in the medieval period. So that leaves steel and steel ideally you want to have a natural finish. I've seen there's a lot of blackened chainmail out there for some reason. I, I don't really understand that. Uh, and there's a lot of different finishes around as well. Uh, it should come oiled and you do need to maintain it as 
with anything in terms of uh, the medieval reenactment equipment. But there we go, guys. So there's a guide and an understanding of chainmail armor for the reenactor. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you in my next video.